So welcome to day two of our next week of e-learning. All right, today we're going to start solving trig equations. These are regular tr equations um, that you're going to solve using regular math stuff. You know, just as long as you don't break any rules, you're you're doing okay. All right, and the end part is going to be finding out what those trig uh, values are on the unit circle. Okay. Um, now again, for these, if you look at the top of the page. Here it says the domain's got to be between 0 and 2 pi. So all your radians that you're going to have are going to be between 0 and 2 pi. So it's not in 0 and 2 pi, you don't use it. And we'll kind of show you how that works as we go through this. Okay, so the first one's pretty easy. All you're going to do is, it's kind of like the inverse yesterday. You're going to be looking at what tree, uh, function you have, and then what does it correspond to on the unit circle based on the numbers that you're given. Okay, so for example, cosine of x equals negative root 3 over 2. That one's already solved for cosine, so all I have to do is find out what radian or radians is cosine going to be in negative root 3 over 2. So if we go to our unit circle, cosine is going to be the x term. And what x values are, are going to be negative root 3 over 2? There's two radians. There's 5 pi over 6, and there is 7 pi over 6. And that's it. All you're doing. So you're 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 solving the uh, trig identities, all right, for a number, and then finding the corresponding radian that goes along with that number. All right, we're gonna go down the page to number two. So we have two cosine of x equals negative one. All right, we have to solve for cosine of x. So in order to do this, we divide both sides by two. So we have cosine of x is equal to negative 1 over 2. All right, so again, we have our trig identity. We're going to put that, or find out where the x term, since it's cosine, is equal to negative 1 half. So again, we look at our unit circle. All right, the x value is negative 1 half at 2 pi over 3. All right, and again at 4 pi over 3. And that's it. Okay, so sometimes you can have one uh, radian that's associated with that number. You can have two, you can have uh, three, I think. Yeah, there's a three one, right? So it just depends on what the trig identity is and then um, what the number is, all right? Number three, so this is an example of equations. You can do the normal thing of equations. You can do anything. Um, as long as it doesn't break any rules, you're okay, okay? One one option to do for these types of problems is to take out the trig function parts and replace them with just variables. So if we said this was x squared plus x equals zero, all right, would that make it easier for you? Yes, no, I'm not sure. That's it's kind of dependent on you. All right. Either way you do the same thing. You'll notice they both have an x in them, so they have a greatest common factor of x or sine either way. So we can take a sine out. Okay, as we can take an x out. All right, what would be left over is sine x, sine of x plus 1, or x plus 1. It's the same thing. All right, so the x values that I'm looking at on the right-hand side here, let's divide this up. It's the same problem. It's just I've replaced the sines with x's to make it seem like it's a different type of problem. But it's really the same processes. It's just you're substituting back in, okay? So you can think of the x here, and the x plus 1 is the same thing as the sine x and the sine x plus 1, okay? So now we have two factors. They're both set equal to 0. So you take the factor, set them equal to 0. So sine of x equals 0, and sine of x plus 1 equals 0. Well, sine of x equals 0 is done for now, all right? But to go... The other part, we have to subtract one from the other side, so we have sine x equals negative 1. All right. So now we have both sine x's equaling a value. You could do the same thing over here, and then what you would be done with, when you solve them both, you would just replace the x's again with sines. Okay. So this is just showing you that you can take something out and substitute like uh, a normal-looking equation. I guess I, I do air quotes around normal-looking. All right, and then just solve it and then reintroduce the trig functions you had earlier, the trig identities you had earlier, um, back into the equation. All 
All right, and we can see that again in questions like number eight. All right, you can do it as a normal factoring problem without the cosines in it, and then reintroduce the cosines when you're done, or you can leave the cosines in it. I'll, I'll do it both ways for number eight as well. All right, but back to number three. Now we have our two things. We're kind of done with the right-hand side because we would go back and um, substitute the sine of x's back in for the two x's. All right, so we can just go back to the left side of this equation. It's the same thing, all right? So now we're going to find out the y values because we're dealing with sine. So you want to find out where does y equals 0 on the unit circle. All right, and this one is a little bit trickier. It's got actually three answers. All right, it's at 0 pi, it is at pi, and it is at 2 pi. There's three different spots where on the unit circle where um, the y value is 0. All right, a lot of people forget about the 0. They just go to pi and 2 pi or they forget about the 2 pi and get 0 and pi. But there's actually 0 and 2 pi are in the same place on the unit circle, but they are two different radians. And then lastly, the sine of x equals negative 1. Where does uh, the y value be? Where is the y value negative 1 on the unit circle? There's only one spot, and it's 3 pi over 2. So these are both going to be your answers. Okay, so there's four answers total for question number 3. All right. Number four. All right, in this case, you're going to, because this is being squared, all right, it's the same thing as if you had, we can again substitute if we had x squared equals one fourth. All right, to get the x by itself, you'd square root both sides. Same thing over on the left side. You're going to square both, square root both sides. Did I say square, I meant square root. All right, so the square root and the square root go away. You get sine x equals um, the square root of 1 over 4, and the same way you would do it on this side, the square root and square root would go away, you did x equals the square root of 1 over 4. Actually, let's fix the square root sign here. Okay, now, one of the things that people always forget, and I put, didn't do it on purpose here, just so I could hopefully have somebody go, but what, do you, what about this piece that you missed, Mr. Brady? And that piece is, when you square root both sides of an equation, it has to be plus or minus. This is oftentimes something that every student will forget, so please don't forget it. All right, as we continue down this, as we said before, if you wanted to take out the sign and just make it x, you could do that, all right, but then you'd have to substitute back it in it back in when you were done. All right, so you would do that at this point in time. On the right-hand side, you would replace the x with sine x again, but you also have to reduce the square roots, okay? So... On the left side, you'd have sine of x equals plus or minus, and then you got to think about what is the square root of 1? That's just 1. And what's the square root of 4? That's just 2. Okay, so now what you're looking for is all the y values on the unit circle that are equal to positive or negative 1 half. Okay, so all the places where you're going to have 1 half in the y value is going to work because it's all the positive and negatives. So we have four of them. We have pi over 6. We have 5 pi over 6, we have 7 pi over 6, and we have 11 pi over 6. And those are the four answers, because those are all the positive and negative one-halves and the y values. All right. Number five. Now, in this case, you know, again, in some of my other classes, they would automatically look at this and say, okay, well, i got to multiply everything together. Well, actually, you don't want to do that. They already, this has already been factored for you, so you want to take the factors and set them equal to zero and solve them separately for their trig identities or trig functions. Okay, so in the first one, we're going to subtract one from both sides. On the second one, we're going to add one we're going to divide it by 2. So now I'm going to find the radians for both of these equations separately. So we're looking for the first one, the x value that equals negative 1. There's only going to be one of them. It is at pi. All right. And then for the other one, the sine value, the y, that is equal to 1 half. And there are going to be two of them. You have pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So you're just looking at the unit circle to find those radians where those 
oops, where those um, values are. All right, number six. Okay, pretty straightforward. You're just gonna subtract one from both sides. So where does tangent of x equal negative one? Okay, now tangent's always a little bit complicated or more complicated. We try to get them usually a little more easier tangent kind of questions just because of that. You don't have to rationalize denominators in certain times. So in this case, we're looking for all the places where the tangent of y over x is going to give you negative 1. Well, there's only two of them, and they're both going to be where you have a negative root 2 over 2 and a positive root 2 over 2. And those are going to be at um, 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. All right, number seven. All right, so again, notice this one has been squared, so it's going to cause problems in a minute. Not a problem, but it's going to be at a level, level of difficulty later. So we have sine, of x, sine squared of x equals one, because we're going to add one to the other side. All right, like before with question number four, we're going to square root both sides. Okay, so we have sine of x equals... And now, because we squared to both sides, we have to do plus or minus, and the square root of 1 is just 1. So we're looking for all the places on the y's where x, or sorry, where uh, the unit circle is going to be um, either positive or negative 1, and there are two of them. It's going to be at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, and the last one, this one is kind of another example where you can substitute things in and out of the equation. If this looks like something you've never seen before in your life, if I rewrote it, it would look something more recognizable. Okay, this is the same same problem. It's just we've replaced the cosines with x's. All right, it's the same problem. Okay, either way you solve it is is up to you. Okay. Except at the end, you'd have to replace the cosines back in or substitute the cosines back in on the uh, equation on the right. Okay, so what we're doing is factoring this. So uh, the factors of 2 cosine squared are going to be 2 cosine and then cosine. The same way it would be over here, it would be 2x and x. Now the factors of 1 are going to be 1 and 1. And now we just got to figure out what the sign's got to be on the ones to give you positive one in the middle. Okay, so that's going to be uh, positive here and negative here. Because two times one give you two, minus one give you positive one. So these are going to be your two, th two, uh, two factors. Now, you take your two factors... Set them equal to zero, and then solve. So you have cosine of x equals one half, and cosine of x equals negative one. All right. So you do the same thing on the right hand side. You'd replace the uh, x's with cosines, and then set them equal to zero. Same thing on the right. It's just if it makes it easier for you to take out the cosines and solve it like a normal factoring problem, without the trig functions in it first. <coughs> Excuse me. That's fine. All right. Now at the end of the problem. Like before, we have to find out where those values of x are going to be on the unit circle and then find their radians. So the first one is where is x going to be 1 half? And that is at pi over 3 and at 5 pi over 3. And then where is cosine going to be negative 1? There's only one spot for that, and that is at pi. All right. And that is solving trig equations. So it's basically solving equations like normal, but then when at the end you get your answers, you're going to look at the unit circle to find out the radians that go along with those specific answers. All right, now there is a practice sheet that has a lot of this stuff and then the stuff from yesterday with the inverse identities, and then there's a bunch of review from the last unit on it too. So please practice those things. If you have questions, email me, ask a question, get some help. All right, we'll see.